Children of the Longhouse by Joseph Bruchak Chapter 8 The Small Players While his sister had been listening carefully to every word that was being said in the council, Okwari had found himself already thinking hard about the game to be played the next day. Okwari was the fastest of any of the other children who had fewer than twelve summers, and even as fast a runner as many of the grown men. When Okwari played the ball game with the other young men in his age group, he was always the one controlling the ball. He tried, though, not to make it obvious. He was not the one who made all the goals. Almost always, when he had gotten ahead of everyone and was close to the goal, he would wait and then throw the ball to one of his teammates so that he or she could be the one to score. The older people, who were always around when the children played Dekwaratan, would smile when watching Okwari. He is like his uncle, they would say. Big Tree played that way when he was a young man. Okwari had not yet reached his full height, but when he stood next to Big Tree, the boy's head reached his tall uncle's shoulder. His body still had some of the roundness of a little boy, but he was tough and strong. He was not afraid of being hit by the ball stick. That was good because anyone who played Dekwarthan and hoped to catch or carry the ball would surely be struck by the stick more than once. He would also be tripped, elbowed, and even trampled on if he fell. It was not uncommon for people to break fingers, toes, even an arm or a leg when a really good game was being played. Even so, although he knew he would not be allowed he would be allowed to play in the game the following day, Okwari was not sure that he would see much of the ball. Grabber and his friends Greasy Hair, Eats Like a Bear, and even the clumsy one called Falsalot loved to play the ball game. They would try to keep the ball among them, so that the glory of scoring a goal could be theirs alone. Although there might be as many as a hundred young men playing on their side, Okwari knew that Grabber's group would bully their way to be in charge of things. Of course, they would also absorb a good deal of punishment from the other team as they played. However... Even though they liked to push others around, none of those four young men were cowards. They were as tough as anyone in the village. Grabber was the finest runner and had never been beaten in wrestling. Eats Like a Bear was bigger than any other man in the village. He was able to lift up logs by himself that two people could barely budge. Greasy Hair was, next to Grabber, the fastest of all the runners in the village. Falsalot, though clumsy, could throw a spear or a ball from a stick, farther than anyone else. It was sad that they were so proud. If I were larger, Okwari thought, I would not let them push me around. If I were older, I would try to teach them to respect others. Okwari sighed out loud. He was not older or bigger. He knew that tomorrow on the field he would be ignored by most of the older boys. Most of them were a little afraid of Grabber and his friends. They would not want to do anything to annoy them. And because it was generally known that Okwari was a good player, they would be sure to keep him from doing anything that might draw attention from Grabber's circle. Okwari found himself remembering a time when he was a small boy of six winters. He had come into the lodge upset. Some of the boys were playing a game and had said that he was too small to join in. His mother looked up from her work when Okwari told her what had happened. She was preparing food as she knelt by their new hearth in the center of the great lodge. The village had just been moved from its old place, a short journey upriver, and she was still getting used to this new hearth. It was good, but somehow the old one had been better for cooking. "'Have you heard the story of the smallest ball players? Heron's Flying said to him. "'Yeah,' said Okwari. "'No.' "'Would you like to hear that story?' Hank, said two voices. Okwari turned around to see his sister Otistia, who had followed him into the longhouse. Her face was filled with concern, and Okwari knew she had seen her brother rejected by the bigger boys. But at the mention of a story, the look on her face became happy. Now, five winters later, Okwari could still remember his mother's words clearly. Long, long ago, the four-legged animals and the birds that fly decided that they would play a ball game against each other. It was agreed that the first team to score a goal would be the winner, 
and the field they set was a big one. One goal was at the place of the big falls toward the sunset between the two great lakes. The other goal was at the place of the falls to the sunrise direction, near where our river runs into the river of the Mohicans. Before the game began, each team gathered to talk about their strategy. The animals met under a tall pine. The birds had their meeting in the top of a giant chestnut tree. Each side brought a drum to their meeting. You could hear the animals playing their drum and singing under the pine, while the birds played their drum and sang in the top of the chestnut tree. Those songs were meant to inspire each side to play better. The birds had just finished their last song when they saw two small animals climbing up the tree. One of them was brown and the other one was black. Both of those small animals had big eyes. They were only a little bigger than mice and they looked very sad. We want to join your side, said the little animals. You do not have wings, said Eagle. You must play for the four-leggeds. They will not let us play, said the two little animals. They say we are too small. The birds talked it over and decided to take pity on the two little ones. We will give you wings so that you can play with us, said the birds. Then the birds took their drum and trimmed off the two pieces of leather that hung loose on the outside of the drum. They fastened those pieces of leather between the legs of the little black animal. They had to stretch the leather to do it, and it was so thin that you could almost see through it. The little black animal, whose name was Bat, jumped off the branch of the chestnut tree and flapped his new wings. Those wings held him, and he began to dart back and forth and up and down very quickly. The birds were pleased, but now they had a problem. They had used all of the leftover skin from the drum. I have an idea, said the little brown animal. You could pull my skin on either side and loosen it. Owl grabbed one side and red-tailed hawk grabbed the other. They pulled until the skin was loose on either side of the little brown animal's body. Then the little animal climbed to the highest branch of the chestnut tree and jumped off. He spread his legs out and glided across the sky until he landed on another tree. Now I am ready to play too, said the little brown animal, whose name became Flying Squirrel. Then Eagle talked to those two new members of the team of the birds. Because you have just learned to fly, said Eagle, you must hold back from the game for a while, while you before you play. Watch carefully, and you may see a time when you can help. When the game began, the ball went back and forth, but neither team could score a goal. Elder Brother the Sun moved farther and farther across the sky. It looked as if the game would end with neither side scoring a point when Rabbit got the ball. Rabbit was so tricky as he ran that none of the birds could catch him. As he went past the big chestnut tree, he felt himself growing tired. He threw the ball toward Fox, but his throw was high. A little brown animal leaped from the chestnut tree and spread its legs wide. It was Flying Squirrel. He swept right in and grabbed the ball in mid-air. Mid flying Squirrel glided over to another tree and scampered up to the top. Then he threw the ball to Bat. Bat went flying toward the sunset goal. The animals leaped and grabbed at him, but they could not catch him. Just as the sun went down, Bat, the littlest ball player, scored the winning goal for the birds. Someone nudged Oquari in his side. He had been remembering that story so well that he had forgotten where he was. His sister, who had poked him hard with her thumb, whispered to him. Listen, she said. Thunder's voice is going to speak. Oquari looked over toward the place where the old sick man had been sitting. He was surprised to see that Thunder's voice was now standing. The old man's eyes, which had been clouded by his grief, now seemed clear. His eyes were looking right at Oquari. People, Thunder's voice said. People, even though he was very old, his voice was still deep and strong and it rumbled like the sound of thunder from overhead. In fact, as he spoke, a roll of thunder sounded from above the longhouse. It seemed as if the thunder beings were answering the old man. Then the rain began to fall very hard. It fell so hard that some of the women hurried to take long poles and pull the umbark coverings over the smoke holes in the roof above them. The rain made a spattering whispering sound as it struck the roof on the ground, and it was hard 
to hear anything else. But Okwari did notice a very wet and unhappy-looking grabber slip into the longhouse through the, its eastern door. Apparently, he did not need to guard the entrance to their village when a hard, cool rain was falling. People, Thunder's voice said again. His voice was so deep that it was easy to hear over the sound of the rain. I would like to play in the game tomorrow, but I am too weak. I can barely walk. So I want to choose someone who will play in my place. I ask you to agree with me in my choice. Although he is young and does not yet have a child, I have watched this young man, and I know that he will play with a good spirit. I choose Okwari to play for me on the old men's team. Do you agree with me? A loud Hank answered his words. Almost everyone in the longhouse spoke that word of agreement. Only two did not speak. One of them was Okwari, who had been stunned into silence. The other was Grabber, whose face was dark with anger.